All righty, let's talk about masking. So masking, we've we touched on a little bit, uh, but if you hold down control, you're going to see we switch to mask pin. So if you hold down control, um, if, you're, if you're sculpting and you're using standard brush, you can hold down alt and you can just sculpt in and then you can let go and you can just sculpt out. If you hold down shift, you can do the smooth brush. If you hold down control, you're going to get a masking brush. What that does is it masks an area. So when you sculpt around it, let's say we grab our clay brush here, you can start sculpting around this and you're going to see the areas that are unmasked are able to be affected and the areas that are masked aren't. If you control tap in your document, now you can hold down alt on the clay brush and you can push this in or you can, you know, bulge this out if you want to by not holding down alt, but any areas that are now unmasked are able to be manipulated and then areas that are masked are not. If you want to know where all this resides, it's under the tool menu and we can open up masking. And so you can see here's a view mask. So our mask is visible to us, it's darker. If you turn that off, you're gonna see, we don't see the mask, but as we sculpt, uh, it's only gonna affect the object where it's unmasked. In fact, if, you're ever, if your object ever acts weird and it doesn't look like it has a mask on, just make sure you have view mask turned on and that might show you what the problem is. You can click this inverse button or control I to invert your mask. You can clear your mask, let's undo that. You can blur your mask, so you're gonna see as we click blur mask, it's gonna go ahead and like soften that mask, so it's just a softer transition. You can do sharpen mask, and that'll sharpen that mask up. So now you have a harsh transition. You can grow your mask to grow it, or you can shrink your mask to shrink it. So let's undo that. Or instead of undoing a bunch of times, let's just hold down control and drag in our canvas. Click OK, or you can go to clear. You can just hit clear to clear your mask. So there are these buttons available to you for masking and you can hover over them and there might be some like control A is mask all and stuff like that. I'm going to show you the hot keys or the, it's not really hot keys, it's kind of the faster way to do all this masking in the ZBrush interface without having to resort to this menu. I just wanted to show you where they were. So for example, let's go ahead and smooth this back out. Let's find a clear open place on our mesh here. I'm gonna hold down control and I'm gonna mask on my object just by painting on it. I can control tap to invert my mask. If I hold down control and then alt, you're gonna see I can unmask and then I can hold down control and I can mask again. Control alt to unmask. And again, control tap in my document to invert. If I wanna clear my mask, I can hold down control and drag and that'll clear it. Or I can undo that. If I wanna invert it again, control tap to inverse. If I want to mask all, I can just control drag to make sure everything's unmasked and then control tap, which essentially does an inverse on an unmasked object and that masks everything. If we control drag again, and then let's go ahead and mask an area here, mask an area here, we'll connect them up and then hold down control alt and we'll unmask these areas. If I want to blur my mask, I can hold down control and tap in the masked object and then I'll blur it. So this is useful if you have like a shape like this that you want to just soften a little bit, hold down control and tap and then I'll soften that mask. And another thing I like to do when I'm masking is I'll use that in conjunction with the deformation menu. There's an inflate slider in here. So if I control tap to invert my mask and then I go in here to inflate, you're gonna see it's gonna push through that mask and inflate that shape, or I can, I can deflate that shape. Now if I sharpen up this mask, so if you remember under masking there's a sharpen mask, the shortcut for that, instead of control tapping to blur it, I can control alt tap to sharpen. And I generally control alt tap inside the unmasked area and control tap in the masked area just because I don't want to control tap in here accidentally and accidentally like mask a section. So you can control alt to sharpen up a mask and then control tap to blur a mask. And if you do that, and then you go up here to inflate, you're gonna see you're getting a much harsher transition. Now you can control drag to unmask and you hold down shift and you can smooth that transition. Or you can go through here and you can blur that mask out and then when you inflate through that, it'll be a softer transition. Now another thing to keep in mind is you can mask, control tap to invert, and then you can also use uh, your gizmo here, and we'll get to the gizmo in just a second, but you can also pull through masks like this. And of course you can use your brushes like clay brush to kind of clay brush through here, or if you want to take your snake hook brush and only affect the unmasked area, you can use your snake hook brush like this and just kind of pull, or your move brush. Let's go ahead and undo that. Now, when I'm hovering, I hold down control, I see I have mask pin selected. I can hold down control and I can mask and paint on my object. I can hold down control alt and I can unmask areas. But if I hold down control and drag in my canvas, you're gonna see I get a rectangle. 
and I can go through here and I can just mask all of that. Now this rectangle functionality, we're going to see that in the visibility modifier as well, but essentially what this is going to do, if I control drag in my canvas, that'll unmask it. I can control drag, let's say we want to put a rectangle right over his eyeball and then drop it, you're going to see it masked straight back from our camera and it went through my entire object. So just be aware that you can mask through, uh, especially when you're using drag rectangle, it's going to go through your entire object. So you're going to want to turn to the side, hold down control and alt, and then drag. So you can see control drag, masks, control alt, unmasks. So then control tap will invert and then we can inflate through that mask and get interesting shapes like this. And then control drag to, to clear that mask completely. Now if I hold down control and I go to my alphas, you can actually bring in shapes here. So you can hold down control and drag and now we can mask a square, or I'm sorry, I mask a star through here, control tap to invert. And then you can inflate through that. So you can punch a star through uh, an object like that. Let's go ahead and undo that. And you can drag out a star here. And you can control tap if you want to blur that out. Or control alt tap if you want to sharpen it up. And then control drag to get rid of it. You can also drag out a star. And then drag out another star. Only this time make it smaller. And then hold down alt. And you can unmask. And you can go in here and you can mask out a star. And then if you're over your object, you can hold down Control and Alt and then you can paint this mask out. Or you can Control drag out here and then hold down Alt and you can unmask that way. If you don't want that alpha anymore, just hold down Control and then just go to Alpha Off. We'll get more depth into alpha for brushes and masking later on. And another one that we'll use later is the Smart Transpose Mask, which is also useful. And you can also import your own custom alphas if you want to mask through those as well. But if you want to like select quickly select the nose, you can control drag around the nose, and then you can hold down control alt, and you can just kind of clean up that selection. If you control drag to unmask that, and also remember, masking works kind of in conjunction with Dynamesh. So if you have a Dynamesh object and you have a mask on, you control drag, you control drag again, that's essentially re-dynameshing. So watch the Dynamesh video for more information on that. We're going to get more in-depth on masking functionality later on in the videos, but for base functionality, you're essentially going to use it to mask an area, and then you can pull other areas around that to get a little bit more functionality on organic sculpting. And then for hard surface sculpting, we'll get way more in-depth on alphas and masks as well.